Oh, hey, Erez. Thanks for being on the show. Thank you very much, Daniel. Thanks for having me. It's my, it's my pleasure. It's my pleasure. And um, as I mentioned before, the we started recording, like, what I love about these, like, actually, for the first time, like, usually when I interview people are... My guests, I don't really know, like usually are like people that I don't know. And uh, I usually have like a window of like 30 minutes window before the interview where I can ask you a question, which we did actually. But in your specific circumstance, I was able to actually read your book, which is, I think is an amazing book. I think it's, there's a lot of things for people that want to move abroad, specifically to Berlin, to specifically to Germany. But that book, just because I was able to read your book, it made me understand more your circumstances. I was able to understand uh, the challenges you went through, the, your emotions, the wins and the losses and all of that. So I think knowing more about you put me in a, in a better, at least I hope it put me in a, in a better spot where to know, ask you better questions, which it doesn't happen, doesn't happen very often. So I'm grateful that I, you, you've, you've wrote their book and I was able to read it. Um, so let's start from pretty much at the beginning. So your book is about moving to Berlin and that's where you're living right now. But you originally from Israel. And I'd like to ask you, like, I'd like to start from the beginning and say like, why did you decide to leave um, Israel and move to, move to Berlin? Uh, well, um, it's combined with, with the numbers of, of reason. So, you know, the first one was that I always had a desire to immigrate. I was, uh, it was my dream for, for, for a very young age. So um, that's why when I grew up, I, I used to travel to many places in the world. Uh, every opportunity I had, I remember that I, I used to, to spend all of my money on, on traveling. And um, another one uh, was that I never actually connected to the Israeli mentality. You know, I'm an introvert. I was I I really like quiet privacy. I I I really was more into the uh, European mentality, and also the situation over there was not the uh, the ideal situation. You know, uh, so uh, you know, growing up in a in a in a political tension all the time, growing up in a situation that that you know, uh, politicians uh, force you to go to the military. And there is always tension, um, and and you don't feel uh, pretty much secure. So I didn't see my future there. So if you combine all the reasons uh, together, that what gave me the uh, the final push. And then I, I I reached a certain point, and then I said I decided to immigrate. And these were uh, were the main reasons. That's how I actually decided that I wanted to immigrate. Okay. And why specifically to Germany? Uh, well, that's a very good question. You know, uh, when we grew up, we always thought that the U.S., you know, when you say immigration, people immediately think about the U.S., uh, maybe Canada. Those were like the, the hotspots of, of immigration. And, um, you know, I, I remember that in the 70s, in the 80s, people used to go there. My uncle actually immigrated to the U.S. Uh, back in the 70s. They search actually for, for people. But now, obviously, we have more opportunities. We have more options. A at the moment, you know, um, it's pretty tough to immigrate to the U.S. Uh, after I've done my research, my research, I read that it's not like what it used to be. And then, you know, I started to read more and more about immigrations, about other destinations. And after a, a depth study, I chose Germany for the uh, following uh, four reasons. Number one was the low cost of living and apartment rent, while uh, other large cities in, in the world, uh, such as London, New York, have a very high, uh, low, a high cost of living. Uh, Berlin's cost of living is is um, is pretty low, um, and it has a, a reasonable apartment renting prices. Um, unlike other cities. Also, it's not fully industrial, so it has lots of parks. In some areas, it's forbidden to build uh, scry uh, skyscrapers, um, and it's nice. It's not like a very industrial city. The second one was a uh, strong economy uh, and a low crime rate. Uh, Germany has uh, the, strong the strongest economy in Europe, and it uh, provides very good conditions and benefits to its residents and citizens. It's also combined as the social economy model with a capitalistic one. And also the country is ranked as uh, a country with a low crime rate. 
So as a resident or a citizen in Germany, you will be able to enjoy a high quality of life. Okay. Another reason um, was um, actually my possession of, of an Israeli part passport, and I'll explain this one. Uh, after I've been doing my research, I found out that uh, Germany allows Israeli to search for a job opportunity within uh, German borders without requiring a, a specific visa to do so. Basically, I knew that in this case, I will be able to find uh, a job there Uh, and once I'll, I'll find a job, I will be able to stay and do the whole bureaucratic procedures uh, within uh, uh, German borders. And um, it's not only, by the way, uh, for Israelis. Uh, so Germany has those uh, the, the lists of privileged countries. Uh, nowadays, due to the Brexit, uh, they added the UK. So it's the the US, Canada, Israel, Australia, New Zealand, the United Kingdom, the United Kingdom, Japan, and South Korea. Those citizens are able uh, to uh, arrive in, in, in Germany and um, they have uh, up to three months there. But uh, during that time, they can search for job opportunities. And the last reason was uh, my desire to, uh, to learn a new language. Um, I was really excited about it. Um, many immigrants find it uh, a bit difficult, but I was intrigued and fascinated by this uh, process. And, you know, I, I've done it with, uh, with love, with passion, and I enjoy the process. Uh, so those were the main reasons why I chose to move to Germany. Okay. So it sounds like you did quite a bit of research before you picked the country to move to. And because you mentioned in your book, and maybe even the listener, like they're asking the question, maybe they're thinking the same question, like from Israel, like being a Jewish person, like you've been brought up seeing like Germany as the and enemy, air quote enemy it were not not sympathetic you mentioned that in your book they were not like in, they were not like brought up to be sympathetic towards german culture or german people was there any like a um, pullback or there was like some like a friction for with your family when you decided to move to germany or were your parents uh, like like let you not let you go but were actually happy for you or like supportive for you to move to germany It's a very good question because, as you mentioned, you know, uh, I grew up in a, in a very, very negative environment uh, toward Germany. Um, you know, people were very, very conservative. Uh, they, uh, they always thought about what happened during the Holocaust, uh, World War II. And you got to understand that in the 80s, Germany was still uh, divided between uh, the east side and the west side. So nobody would who thought that Germany uh, would go through the process, through that process and, and become the Germany that we see today. So, you know, things are changing. Uh, I know, I, I remember that, that this, this whole negative environment actually, actually uh, when, when I grew up in, in that negative uh, environment, I, I actually knew uh, all of the, uh, the, the feeling towards Germany But then, you know, I started to hear stories uh, and read more information and, you know, and saw that the country changed completely. And then I, I, I realized at some point that I had a window of opportunity. I, I knew that uh, actually now, uh, nowadays uh, it's, it's a very sensitive is issue. Uh, the, the whole racism uh, issue is a very sensitive issue uh, in Germany. That's why um, if there is uh, an incident regarding racism or anti-Semitism, you will hear about it immediately and everybody like try to, to do whatever it takes to, to avoid it. So uh, they really sensitive about that issue, especially here in Berlin. And we're talking about a tolerance uh, environment. Uh, and that's why it's a, it's a very, very international city because a lot of people feel safe here. Uh, they know that this country, country has changed. And that's why many people from all around the world are coming uh, because they know that uh, they will be accepted. And um, I, I read it. I, I heard stories before. That's why I knew that the country uh, changed. Okay, so there was no friction or anything from the family or from your peers or friends to tell you why you're going to Germany, why are you going there? Can you go somewhere else or? No, no. I mean, uh, my parents um, are open-minded people um, and they also 
you know, they have knowledge. I mean, they 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 also uh, you know they also knew what what went on with Germany, and they they also knew about the whole development that that the country uh, been through. Um, I also heard stories about happy people that that moved to to, to Germany, and that's why I'm glad I've, I've done my my research because I was actually when I chose Germany, I was one percent. Uh, uh, happy with my choice. Um, I was satisfied with that choice. Okay, because then you moved to to Berlin from Israel. Um, first of all, what age? What, how old were you when you decided to leave Israel and move to Germany? Uh, I was thirty five, thirty five years old uh, when I decided to uh, to to immigrate. Um, so I'm happy that I've done it, uh, at this age because, um, I gained a lot of life experience as well. Uh, that's why I was fully ready for, for the change. And I was fully ready, uh, to make the, uh, I was fully ready to start the immigration process. I felt like I've gained a lot of knowledge. I'm ready. I had, uh, I've saved some money. I was mature, and and this is what I wanted to do, and this is what I intended to do. I I I wanted to. I, I knew exactly what I was getting into, and I knew that it's not going to be easy. But I was prepared for that by all means. And that's actually was one of the questions I was going to ask you, like because he didn't want it to say in Israel. That was pretty clear. Even the fact that, from what I read in your book, the things you went through the challenges you went through and your motivation to stay in the country in Berlin were amazing. And that must be from a really good place of motivation. Like, I don't really want to go back to Israel. And my question, which you, you, you kind of answered, was that, like, why did you wait for so long to leave Israel? Like, why, like, if you really don't want to stay in the country, if I was you or like maybe other people listening right now, like, said, like, a, I probably as soon as like I turn 18, as soon as I can go out of this country, I will leave. But as you say, like you probably were not in the place where you have enough knowledge, enough exp- life work experience of life experience to move abroad and succeed in a, in a job abroad. Like, and so in your career in Israel, were you, what, what point in your career were you in Israel? Were you like uh, having like a good job and like ready to start up at the ladder of your career in, in Israel? Well, regarding jobs in Israel, um, there is no stability, and I'll explain. Um, so even if you work in a good company, uh, there is no guarantee that you will continue. Things tend to change really, really fast because you got to understand that the economy affects uh, everything. So uh, whether you have a small business or, or a large corporation, things tend to change. Uh, and I felt uh, instability. And I wanted stability in my life. That's why, uh, basically, um, I, I'm happy that I, I, I live in Europe because um, Europe is not 100% capitalistic. Uh, therefore, if something happened, uh, the country will take care of me. Um, and this was really, really important for me. And I think I, I, I really care about um, equal rights. I really care about uh, about the fact that individuals will, will receive benefits. Uh, I think it's, it's right. It's the right thing to do. And, and that's why I like the, uh, the social economy model. That's why I like the German model. I like the Scandinavian model as well. So countries like Sweden, Denmark, Norway, um, they, they have... Uh, the, the, pretty much the same model as, as the German model uh, regarding economy. So that's that's why I wanted to, uh, to uh, I knew that, that I, I will have more opportunities and that's why I decided, this is another reason why I decided to go uh, to, uh, to Germany. Okay, but when, when you decided to leave, when you moved to Germany, you were trying to find a job, you already have experience in, at least in one field, right? At least, and that was what I'm trying to say, like, because many people, if they're moving when you are 18 years old, it's hard to find a job or it's hard, not, maybe not finding a job. It's hard to actually getting a visa and finding a sponsor and going through the immigration process because you don't have enough knowledge, enough skills, enough um, work experience in uh, in the field that you're trying to find a job that will let you go and move forward in your immigration pr- process. In your situation was different. Like you said, like you were 35, you already have some work experience back in your country. And by reading your book, you you already knew what kind of field you were looking for a job. You were, were able to find a job because you were 
better than other candidates just because you have more experience, which is the fact that you left your country so, like, not late, but later than probably the usual what people would expect from uh, from you from somebody in your position where you, you don't, you don't want to live in your country, you want to get out of your country and move somewhere else. So I think that was an advantage for you to be able to leave your country at 35. And now I want to move to the fact that like, because it sounds like, okay, you moved when you were 35, you had experience, but your immigration process and then finding a job wasn't that easy, right? Would you tell a little bit more about the process of you finding a job and all of that and trying to stay in the country in Berlin. Yes, and I think that the process was not easy because uh, when I came to Germany, the whole world came to Germany. So there is a huge comp competition even now. Um, it's a, People need to, under to understand that it's a very, very popular, popular destination in terms of immigration. So if you have to compete, um, you know, to find an apartment, you have to compete to find jobs, you have to compete in, in other fields, you know, it's not enough that you you go there, but you, you got to understand that like you, there are thousands of others who are seeking and trying to, to, to find and applying to the same position. And this is the, 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 the main part that, that people need to understand. Of course, you know, there's also the language uh, barrier, you know, uh, if you do not speak German, uh, you will be able to apply only uh, to English uh, uh, positions. And um, that's why the competition is even higher in, in English positions. That's why I state in the book that if you are a bilingual or you speak uh, more than one language, it will be easier for you. Uh, to find a job because then you can focus uh, not only on the English, English markets, but on other markets as well, um, even though you don't speak German. Okay. And one other thing you touched about language, like you, you went through, um, actually, I will refer to that, like uh, speaking of the language, um, you're now fluent in German, but how did you learn the language? I've had, like I've mentioned, you know, I had a, a desire to, to, to study the language. So I, I was very, very motivated. Uh, and that's why I've done, uh, when I first got here, even before I found the, the, the job, I started immediately. Um, I didn't want to waste any time. So I just went to uh, intensive course uh, and then I met um, more immigrants and, and uh, it was fun. Uh, they gave me motivation as well. So I've, I've, I, I had like my daily routine. So I was going uh, to my German course every day for three and a half hours. Um, and then uh, I, the rest of the day I was uh, applying for jobs. Um, and uh, it's, it's really important to, to, to have a daily routine because otherwise you can get lost really quickly. You need to have goals and then, uh, and then you can move forward within the immigration process. So for me, I created this plan that I will go to, uh, I will, I'll do whatever it takes to, to start to study German as soon as possible. And then I'll also search for job opportunities during uh, the rest of the day. And that's, that's, that's what, what I did basically. Okay. So you left Israel with no, English, sorry, no German at all. No, I, I spoke zero German, okay. no German. <laughs> okay. That's kind of, that's kind of brave. I mean, I mean, one one of the benefits of knowing the English is if you can move pretty much everywhere in the world and still communicate, at least a little bit of communication, you still be able to communicate with people just because you've got this universal language. But still, like, it was pretty brave going to Germany and trying to start a new life with absolutely no language knowledge. But at the same time, like you mentioned, like you had, you had your routine, you had your schedule, you had your goal and goal which I read through your book and something that I really relate with you. Yeah, like this goal, I want to stay in Berlin. I want to stay in the country. I do whatever it takes to get there. You were like so focusing into that. You were like having this schedule, as you said, like three, study the language three hours a day, the rest of the time, finding a job, finding an apartment, which is another chapter I like to talk, talk about later. Like you had like this, like a strict routine because you wanted to make it work. And I found like very co a, a connection there because I was the same, right? because for me, I didn't have a plan B. My pl I only had the plan A to stay in the country. I didn't, want, I didn't want to go back to Italy. I wanted to make it work. So I had to do whatever it takes to, I had to do whatever it took to, to actually make it work. And so I really connected 
on the, the, the level with you in your book. I want to talk about like now, I want to talk about uh, the challenges to finding a job and finding an apartment. Specifically, actually, let's start maybe talking with about finding an apartment because sounds like you, for like my people that are thinking moving abroad, an easy process, you find an Airbnb, you find a place and it seems like it's actually, we never actually really discussed this in the podcast. So I like to talk to you because you went through a lot of apartment, uh, not a lot, but you went through like a, quite a few apartments and bad situation and oh my God, just, okay, I'll let, <laughs> I'll let, I'll let you go and I'll let you explain like your process of finding an apartment because it was, uh, it was hard to read <laughs> in some place like, oh my God, this is crazy, which I totally relate to as well. Yeah, so Berlin has a unique uh, situation. Uh, it's not, uh, fully like that in other German cities, but since Berlin is very, very popular, uh, finding an apartment is not an easy task. And therefore, you know, when you, uh, when you apply, uh, you got to understand that, that hundreds will apply to the same thing, to the same ad. That's why, uh, you know, it, it was very important for me to find the right way to find the right uh, method that will make it easier for me to find an apartment. Uh, so if I would have found a number, I would call the advertiser immediately uh, because there's nothing like a personal connection. If there was no number, I would just send, send the application. Um, so there are actually in the book uh, platforms that, that I used to, uh, to use, uh, websites that I, I used to uh, apply for finding uh, apartments. And also, you know, since the uh, the situation, since it's it's pretty hard, also it's it's a, it's even more difficult to find apartment for long term. So even if you find apartment, uh, you gotta understand that uh, it it's not going to be for the long term. You have to search again for another one and another one until you find uh, apartment that that will be suitable for you. That that will. Uh, have a long-term contract. But since we're talking about a lot of demand, uh, it's it's going to be hard. You know, at some point I, I, I couldn't, so I stayed in a hostel, you know. I, I stayed there with uh, like eight people in the room, but I, I didn't care, you know. I I mean, for me, I only saw the goal of, of staying. So it, it wouldn't matter that much. And, you know, that, that's a situation in, in, in Berlin. So it's not easy uh, to find an apartment in Berlin. But also, like you went through uh, some apartments or the share apartments, so you have a room with other people in the um, in in, a, in the same apartment, which adds another layer of complexity and challenges because then you have to deal with the people in your apartment that have this different custom, have different uh, lifestyle, have different way of living, and none of the time can that matches your lifestyle or your life of living and the way you want to have your privacy and all that stuff. So you went through quite a bit of challenges there as well. So you have to finding a place where you were like a, trying to stay and finding a job, finding a place of like so many different challenges. That's, that's one of the things I like to talk about it because like, as I said before, like I, we never spoke about this topic in the podcast and I've been through and I never actually thought about like talking about until until I read that in your book that sometimes you can't afford to find a place on your own. You have to share a place with other people and need to deal with other people that can be challenging. And also, I don't know if you agree with me, but for me, even the fact that you sharing a place with other people, I enjoy it even because that's a way to connect with people, to make new friends. And in, in most cases, in some cases, if you're lucky, like I was in New Zealand, you create your own, your second family. Was that your case or do you agree? Or are you more like a person, no, I want my, my own space. I want, I want meet, I can meet people somewhere else. Well, for me, um, at some point, you know, I, 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 what I cared about is just, you know, to find my own quiet place um, and and have my privacy there, a place that will allow me to uh, focus on more immigration goals. But, you know, as you read uh, in the book, it wasn't that easy because, uh, you know, I had lots of issues, you know, um, issues with, with tenants, issues with landlords. But I think the most important thing is even if you have to switch lots of apartments, just uh, treat it as a, as a temporary stage 
you know, enjoy as much as you can, you know, laugh about it. I mean, you know, one one place you're you're here, the next day you're there. And this is another thing to, to remember. Everything that happens to you, don't take it uh, personally. Uh, learn from it. And then uh, on your next search, you'll be able to, to come with more experience. That's what I've done, basically. So um, I think that the more places you switch, the more apartments you switch, uh, the better you know the contract, the better you know how things uh, will go, what's the procedure, and therefore you can come ready. That's how I saw it, for example. Um, of course, you meet nice people, you meet less nice people, uh, but it, it's a part of the immigration, you know, it's a part of the immigration. Uh, you know, uh, people, uh, some, some of them uh, say, okay, I want to immigrate, but first I must have an apartment, I must have a European passport, I must have a job, uh, I want to feel secure, but it's not going to go this way. You know, you have to start from something. And that's why I think that even if you come, just imagine if I ask you, Daniel, if I say to you, come right now to a new country, you have everything there. You have apartment, you have a job, you have everything you want. When you, when you run into a difficulty, it will be very, very hard for you to, to solve that difficulty because everything was prepared for you. Oh, totally. But when you have difficulties along the way, you can learn from it and then you know how to tackle those difficulties in the best way. And that's how I saw it. I saw every difficulty that I had, I learned from it. And then, you know, uh, I've gained experience. That, that's how I saw it. Oh, I can totally agree with what you just said. Like, even though at the beginning, maybe the challenges or the things, the obstacles came in my way, like, oh my God, another one. But at the same time, then you start appreciating just because the fact that the things that you can learn from this challenge and the person you become because you overcome these challenges in your life. So I absolutely agree with you. And so your experience when you moved from Israel to, to Germany and to Berlin was the same that you have, it was the idea of Germany and the idea of Berlin the same that you had in mind and what make you stay in, uh, in Berlin? What make you feel like a, you were, you find a place, you find a home? Well, it's a very good question uh, because I believe in uh, visualizing, you know, people, when they have goals, they have dreams, they always, uh, lots of mentors also, they say to you, uh, visualize, imagine what, what it would be like, uh, how would you see your life, uh, feel the streets, feel the alleys, feel the people, how do you see it, just even before you get there. And I think that it's really, really important uh, because if you're visualizing it before, it can come reality. That's uh, what I believe in, and this is actually a fact. That's why um, even before I came, I tried to uh, visualize and I imagined what would it be like. No matter how much you read about the, the immigration process or, or read about Berlin or read about Germany, nothing can prepare you for, for, for being there yourself, uh, arriving there. But since I've, I've read a lot of information and I, I actually visited the city in 2012 as a tourist, I, I knew uh, what Berlin was, was like as a tourist, of course, not, not as an immigrant, but uh, it was easier for me. The whole process was easier for me because I, I was actually, I, I read a lot of information. I imagined what, what it would be like. And then when I came there, it felt it, it was easier that just because I've, I've done it before, just because I read about it and I I've pictured my life uh, there before I even came there. And what was the thing that made you stay, made you feel like home? Oh. Uh, first of all, uh, the acceptance, the, uh, the fact that they ex uh, accept other immigrants, the fact that the country is fully open, the fact that they have tolerance. Um, we're talking about international city. We're talking about a city. Uh, you you got to understand that I didn't move to a, a small German village with a German environment. I moved to international city. So... When I arrived there, I met lots of immigrants. And when you meet lots of immigrants and they are in the same situation as you, you can exchange ideas with them. You have bonds, you have connections. And that's why it, it's, to my opinion, in, in my opinion, it's, it's much easier to move forward because everybody's helping one another. Everybody has the same goal and everybody wants to succeed. 
Um, and that's, I think that's what gave me motivation and straightened my, my beliefs and even made it easier uh, for me to stay. I liked everything. I liked, uh, uh, I liked the, uh, the, the, the fact that, that everything is very, very organized, the bureaucracy, the, uh, the fact that, uh, you know, uh, there are very kind people, um, the atmosphere, the streets, I, I, I liked it. And um, also I liked the fact that it was not 100% German uh, city. Uh, there were foreigners and immigrants and um, they also provided me the motivation I needed. Okay. And going back to the challenges that we were talking about before, like what was the main challenges? What was, what was the main challenge you have to face? What was the main thing that you, looking back, remember like, oh my God, that was like, a, that was the, the bigger thing? Yeah. So as I always say, you know, the, the, the difficulty that for me anyways, you know, the, the most difficult part was the feeling of loneliness. Um, I was alone, basically. Uh, I had to do everything myself. And then at some point you feel lonely. You feel like even though you're there, you don't have fully connection with the surroundings. Uh, so that was the hardest part for me. You know, uh, you, we can talk about uh, work visa. We can talk about apartments. We can talk about jobs, language. But this was the most difficult part for me. And that's why I tried to uh, avoid lo loneliness as much as I could. That, but, but you know, um, I, 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 I went to social gatherings. I forced myself to, to, to go. I forced myself to meet new people, to interact with people. I spoke with my, my parents, uh, with my family. Uh, and that's what, what uh, got me out of the, the loneliness uh, feeling that I, that I had. Okay, because reading your book sounds like you find like a good compromise between reaching your goal and dealing with loneliness. Because I, I was, we were talking before that we started recording the fact that you mentioned in your book that you met this girl, you were going out with this girl. But having a relationship at that point in life was something that would put you away from reaching your goal. You were focusing on staying in the country, finding a job and making Finding, going through your immigration process and you found at that point in life that having a girlfriend, having a relationship would take away time from reaching your goal. So I like the fact that you find that a compromise or at least a compromise for you. Did that change now that you have um, reached your goal or have you reached your goal into, because you know you got a visa unless you think to change by reading your book, you know you got a, a longer visa. Did that ch change or you still have the same kind of mindset of like reaching other goals? As, well, it, it, you, you bring up a very, very interesting point. Uh, at some point, I, I was not ready to, uh, to develop a relationship because I, the reason for that is, was because I, I felt instability. I felt like everything can change 180 degrees to the other side. That's why for me, it was very, very important to be focused as much as I can, you know, because if you lose yourself, even for a second, you can lose everything. That's how I felt. That's why I wanted to uh, dedicate my, my, all the time I had and focus uh, on my immigration process. Now, you know, as time goes by, uh, you know, you, you understand that you have more and more stability. You reach a task, you have more stability. You reach an average task, you gain more stability. Uh, right now, I'm, I'm, I have my stability. Right now, I, I, you know, I, I have steady income. I, I, I have a great job. I, I, I have stability. I don't have to switch apartments, switch jobs. No, now I have stability. I'm happy. That's, that's what I wanted. That's, I, I, I gained that stability. But then again, you know, even if I, I will run into a difficulty, uh, I know how to, I will know how to solve that difficulty. You know, there's always things can, can change, but um, I, for me, the, the, the most important thing that, I, this is why I, I, I wrote the book, I wrote it because I wanted the, uh, the readers to have tools. And, and the more tools you have, the better uh, understanding uh, you'll have how to solve the problem that, that you have to face during the immigration process. 
Yeah, no, absolutely. That's the same reason or the similar reason why I started this podcast. Just tell like people like the tools to go overcome the challenges, but also to put in front of them like the challenges that might happen. Like for me, I don't know, I don't know you, but sometimes when you go through challenges and maybe there's a challenge after a challenge after a challenge and you say like, maybe this is not meant for me. This is not like what I'm supposed to do because it seems like everything is it's in my way. I can't reach my goal. But knowing that I've, other people have done it and other people going through the same kind of challenges that you are going through at, at right now, it's a normal process. It's a normal thing. So it's not that because you're not good enough, not because it's not your path. It's not because there on that or like it's not it's just a normal process and that's why i love your book and that's why i started this podcast to, sh to share to other people like what it's like to move to a new country and what the challenges are of moving to a new country and the benefit because now we're going to talk about the benefit like yes there's going to be all these challenges but the grass usually is greener on the other side what's your takeaway with that well, first of all, uh, I think that it's, I, I've, I totally agree with what you said, people have done before. And this is the message that I would like to, to, to bring to the viewers. You know, I, I used to, uh, to go into the streets of, you know, I was wandering uh, into the streets of Berlin and then I've met this uh, vendor. Uh, he sold hats on the streets. He was a Pakistani vendor. Uh, I started to talk with him and then I realized that he already lives in Berlin for uh, ten year, over 10 years. And then after the conversation with him, uh, I realized that anything is possible, you know. Uh, he had no formal education. He was just uh, a simple guy who sold hats on the streets. And I thought, if he can do it, I can do it too. And then um, actually I realized that anything is possible, you know, it's, it's achievable. And it's already it's, it gave me more motivation. Now, of course, you know, you have ups and downs, but but if you are um, prepared for, for the challenge and, and if you are fully focused on your goals, you can achieve it. For some uh, immigrants, it will take longer. For some, it will take less time, but everyone will reach that, that finish line at the end. That's the, mo the most important thing. Always keep the eyes on, on the ball. Always you know, always move forward and, and never give up. That was the uh, the main thing, the main idea of, of the process. And do you have any regrets about leaving Israel, leaving your own country? Um, absolutely not. Uh, I think that, uh, you know, on, on the contrary, actually, um, it was my dream of, of I really, uh, I, I, you know, I really wanted to immigrate and I wanted, you know, I wanted to do it for, for a very long, long time. Um, so I, for me, my, my dream was to leave the country permanently and I do not regret it. And, and actually it's, it's the best decision I've made in, in my life. That, that's how I feel. Oh, I now that I, you know, I get, I, I get to enjoy the fruits and, and to leave the, uh, you know, to live in, in Europe and, and, and I see the opportunities and everything. Absolutely. And what was the biggest upside about immigrating, about leaving your country? Um, well, it's another very interesting question. There, first of all, uh, let me start by saying that there are a lot of advantages. There are a lot of, um, a lot of advantages. Um, and I think that I have met uh, in my life people that I would not meet anywhere else in the world, such as, let's say, Arabs who immigrated to Berlin from our countries, for example. So today, most of Arab countries prevent the entry of Israelis and vice versa. Israel also prevents the entry of Arabs from uh, Arabs, most of Arab countries. Um, and uh, I'll tell you a, a, a little secret, you know, uh, regarding uh, immigrants from Arab countries, it was much easier for me to connect with them due to the fact that, that we grew up with the same uh, mentality, Middle Eastern mentality. So I, I'm very grateful that I was able to meet new people that, you know, it was not possible uh, elsewhere. And um, I, as I mentioned, you know, I also enjoy the social economy model and the equal rights that, that residents in Germany receive. And this is the, the upside. And I think it's 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 great. You you get to get you get to know another culture. You get to know uh, more and more people. That that's great. You know, it's 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 great. And that's the beauty of living in a in a in a city where like a multicultural city where you can meet people from 
everywhere. And in your case, and in my case, you speak English or maybe German, you speak like this universal language, you talk to people from all over the world. That's one of the things I loved as well. One of the first things I noticed when I, I went to New Zealand, the fact that I was sitting at the table with people from people, I don't know, from all over the world, like all communicating with the same language, it was mind blowing for me. And do you feel lucky to be an immigrant? Absolutely. I think um, the immigration process strengthened me uh, mentally and uh, also made me appreciate many things in life. Uh, you know, like, for example, the fact that I'm grateful for the fact that I have a roof over uh, on top of my head for, uh, you know, I'm physically and mentally healthy. Um, I'm, uh, I'm, I feel lucky for meeting amazing people who helped me during the immigration uh, journey. So absolutely, I, I feel it's, uh, I feel like I've gained experience, a uh, really, really important experience during the, uh, the immigration process. Absolutely, yeah. And for the people that want to move to Berlin or maybe move to Germany, do you have any specific advice? I know you've wrote a book with a lot of information, a lot of, but what would you tell the, one of the thing, what the main advice you would give to people that, are, that wants to move to Berlin? Well, um, if you really want to immigrate, uh, you got to understand that the journey is not going to be easy. And therefore, I would suggest that, um, you know, read before, read information about it. You'll have to work hard. I strongly suggest to read more and more information and prepare yourself uh, for the challenging uh, journey. But uh, with that said, remember that people have done it before and therefore anything is possible and you can achieve it for sure. Sweet. Um, if you could go back in time or if you could make a phone call, like imagine if you have this magic telephone that you can make a phone call to your younger self, like, I don't know, 18 years old, 18 years old yourself, like, what would you tell to your younger self? <laughs> uh, I, would, uh, tell, I would tell him, uh, you're a very strong person. You can do it. Um, you have the immigration spirit. Go do it. Would you tell your young self to leave Israel earlier? Or I think 35 was the, the perfect time to leave your Israel? Well, it's a good question. It's a good, really, really good question what you're asking, because I think that I left at a stage that I was ready mentally to do so. Of course, I could have, I could have done it earlier, but then again, you know, I had less experience and, you know, there, 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 there is advantage and disadvantage. That's why I, I strongly suggest that if you want to, to immigrate to another country, do it when you fully understand what it means. If you are prepared in, in your 20s, do it. You know, uh, when I was in my 20s, I wasn't fully prepared. You know, I wanted to see the world. I wanted to travel more. I wanted to, to experience other stuff. And that's why there is also the, there is upside and, and downside. You know, I... But I'm, I'm, I'm glad that I, I've done it, you know, better late than, than ever. You know, it's, I don't feel like I've done it late. I feel like, like uh, the fact that I've done it in, in, in my stage actually made it easier and gave me a better perspective about the process. That, that's how I feel. Okay. Uh, for the listener that maybe wants to get in touch with you, maybe wants to find your book. Uh, first of all, where they can find your book and what's the title of your book? Uh, the book is available on Amazon, all of Amazon's regions. Uh, you can also purchase the Kindle version. Uh, the book uh, is called Berlin's Immigration Secrets. Um, so, of course, you know, read it, enjoy it. Uh, it will give you a better perspective about the immigration process. If you intend to immigrate, um, you'll find this book very, very valuable. Uh, listeners uh, can connect with me. Um, I'm available on a website called goodreads.com. Uh, it's a platform from authors. So um, it's a large platform for, uh, for readers and authors. You can search my profile, ask me anything you want. Uh, once again, goodreads.com. That's the, uh, the platform. You can ask me anything there. And um, if you purchase the book, the book, enjoy it. This is the most important part. Yeah, no, I, as I said, like I had, a, I lucky enough, I got the copy of your book. 
and I start reading it. And I have to say, it's like a, so. It's very easy to read. It's very like a, as I said before, even the interview, like it's like it's well, it's well written. And I think it's more focused for the people that wants to move to to Berlin or Germany in particular. But even for general people that want to move abroad, I think you can always find some information. Or it's also like the mindset, like the thing that you talk about, mindset, the things you went through, the challenges you went through and how you overcome them, like the things like, I I don't know, I really connected with the, I really relate with what you said and I really enjoyed the book. So I don't know, for, for people that want to, they're thinking of moving abroad, thinking of moving specifically, specifically to Germany or Berlin. Yeah, definitely get a copy. It's really, it's really good. It's really good. Sweet. Okay, I think we got to the good time to wrap this up. Thank you so much, Erez, for uh, sharing your story and um, and and yeah, and being on, on being on the show. Thank you very much, Daniel, for having me. And uh, let me uh, spread the word about the, the book and giving this platform for uh, immigrants to tell their stories. Thank you very much, Erez. Bye bye. Bye.